Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers, and I am on day 16 of having COVID, still testing positive. Don't feel as bad as I did at first, but still not healthy. However, it's been so long, I just wanted to make a video. I just wanted to create something. I wanted to teach something. And so in my downtime, I've been setting up the servers at my micro data center uh, at, at my farm. And one of the things that I've had to do is set up log rotation because it turns out when you use things like Docker for running a lot of your services, they don't often have log rotation built in. And as I was moving from my old stuff to my new high availability Proxmox cluster, which we'll talk about in future videos, I realized that like my transmission, the, the torrent program that downloads stuff, the log was several gigabytes. Just the text log was several gigabytes and growing every day. So I need to set up some log rotation because again, it's not usually something that's included in Docker images. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really simple. Uh, the, the Docker host that you're running will almost certainly have log rotate built in. And it's really easy to set up log rotation for any file on your system. And we're gonna check it out right now. All right, so I'm here on my uh, Powers Flick server. This is actually where I run Plex. And uh, there's a couple different things that I wanna show you. First of all, the transmission thing that I talked about. If we go into, uh, now this is my live server. Hopefully I'm not giving away any valuable information here, but uh, this is just the uh, opt docker is where I keep my mounted uh, volume information so that the docker container keeps its uh, persistent information in the opt folder. And anyway, inside here is where uh, all of the files that it keeps running are stored. And if you look... Uh, right now, it's pretty small because this is like I said, it was like two gigabytes of information in the transmission log. So what I did is I set up log rotate and every day, I think I set it up for every day, uh, it will rotate the log and we can see what that looks like if we force it to do a log rotate right now. We'll just do log rotate. We'll do dash V so we can see all the stuff that's happening. Force and the file is etc log rotate d and it's just called transmission we're going to look at how to make one of these in just a second uh, so i'm going to force it to run that and it did all of its stuff very very quickly ls minus lh and we're going to see that sure enough it it compressed it so now it's uh the the log that it rotated is now only 82 kilobytes and it has a fresh new log that it's using right now and nothing's written to it yet so it's it's zero but it'll do this every day and then it will delete the oldest ones depending on how you set it up right now there is one more thing that uh, i want to set up and so I, I left that unset if you will and that is in my opt r clone uh folder if we do ls minus lh we're going to see here we have my r clone uh, which is how i mount uh, google uh, drive on my local machine and i have like unlimited storage there it's kind of unknown if you can still get that deal uh, if i were to do it over right now i'd use dropbox because you can get truly unlimited storage uh, but that's a whole nother video altogether uh, anyway i do have r clone information in a video in my in my channel if you want to look that up but uh, basically this log grows like crazy i mean it just gets super super huge and it doesn't have any log rotation built in so uh, this is the file and again like i said it's 170 megabytes right now so what we're going to do is create a log rotate file and we're going to go into etc log rotate dot d and you're going to see there's a bunch of things in here already that transmission one that i created the other day you can look and see what that looks like uh, this is what a, a file looks like when you create it you tell it where the log file is and then all of these things that you want to do so i'm going to create another file in here uh, so vir clone this doesn't exist so it's going to be a new file and i'm going to create one on the fly here so where does the file live it lives in opt r clone r clone dot log is where my file actually lives and open squiggly uh, squiggly braces there and now this is where we can put all the options and there are a ton of options that you can put into here to have it handle logs in different ways i'm going to put some that make sense for me and probably for you but you know feel free to look at the man page for more if you want to do all sorts of other things now the first thing is how often i want it to rotate i'm going to say um let's do weekly now you can do weekly you can do daily so it will rotate every day or you can actually do a size. So I want it to rotate whenever the size is 100 megabytes, for example. And then every time it reached 100 megabytes, it would rotate and start a new one, okay? I'm gonna do, I want it to rotate, uh, 
actually 170 megabytes was one day. So I'm going to say rotate daily. All right. So that's how often I want it to rotate. Now, the next thing that we have to tell it is how many rotations do you want it to do before you delete the oldest one? Right? So every day it's going to do that thing where it like compresses the old log and starts a new one. How many is it going to keep? Well, I'm going to say rotate. And since we're doing it daily, let's keep seven of them. So we have a week's worth of logs that are kept. All right. And so it'll do like, uh, gz.1.2.3.4 all the way to six and then when it gets to the seventh one or when it gets to the eighth one it will delete the oldest one and then you know it'll just keep going so it doesn't fill up the hard drive all right so every i want to keep seven days worth because it's going to do it daily now if you do this like weekly and you do rotate seven it's going to keep it for seven weeks so you have to really keep track of like what it is that you're telling it you want to do all right the other thing that i really encourage you to do is compress because otherwise it's just going to store the huge text file but text compresses really well so you can do compress and it's going to make a gz file so if you need to get it you can just un you know g unzip it and look at it but for the most part it'll take up less storage while it's just sitting there on your drive um i'm gonna do a couple other things like missing is okay so missing okay this means it won't error out if there's not a log there uh that's i because especially at first you're not going to have all of the logs so if it's missing, it's okay. Um, and you could do something like not if empty. That's a an option that I put in there. It's not necessarily something you want to do. You could always rotate an empty log if you want. But basically this says if it's not em or you know, if it's empty, don't rotate it. It's fine. Just leave it where it is. It's not taking up too much room. And then uh, this next one is one that's really, really important. And it is. I'm looking up to make sure that I get the spelling correct. Copy truncate so a lot of programs when they are writing to a log if you were to move that file and create another one with that same name they wouldn't be able to continue writing to it because they were actually writing to an inode that was already there so log rotate if you don't use this copy truncate feature will just like compress the log file and create a new one in its place but a lot of programs don't like that and they just won't write to the log file unless you restart the program. Well, that's not ideal. So what log rotate does, it's kind of sneaky. It actually makes a copy of the actual file in use. So it just copies it and then it compresses that one and then it erases everything in the live file. So it like, uh, it copies it and then it truncates the file that's there. That's why it's called copy truncate. But basically it keeps writing to the same file your program does. So it doesn't freak out. It just keeps using the log and it just takes like a snapshot of it and, and copies that. So I always put that in, even if the, even if the program wouldn't freak out, I haven't found any reason not to do it this way because it's just safer all the way around and you don't end up with logs that aren't getting written and stuff like that. And then one other thing I want to mention, and I actually don't have this put into place because for me, you notice I'm running root, which is not ideal, uh, but a lot of my servers are containers and they're single purpose. And so I will a lot of times run things as root in the inside of a, a container or inside of a single purpose server. Again, security wise, it's not ideal, uh, but in a, I, I like to separate my servers out like that or my containers out like that. So anyway, if you have programs that are running as a user, like say you want to rotate, um, oh, I, I don't even know, something that's running like the post fix, post fix log or something that isn't handled, that one would already be handled, but something that's owned by somebody else, right? The user is, is somebody else. What you can do is say, create uh, what mode you want. So like 0644, this is like the schmod command, right? And then who you want it owned by. So like um, S powers, and then the S powers group. So if you put that line in there and then we'll close this, what that would do is when it creates the new files, it will make sure that they're created as owned by S powers user and group with that uh, 644 permissions that they would have. Now, again, I am running everything as root. So I just want it to be root, 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 root. And so I don't do that, but that's how you would specify if you need a different user uh, to have ownership of those files. All right, anyway, so we, we do this, we save it. And honestly, that's it. We're done. It's going to now start rotating my R clone file every day. Did I set it for every day? I don't remember. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. So every day it's going to rotate it for seven days and then it'll erase the oldest one. Then if we go into opt R clone and LS minus LH, so we can see it's in there right now, the R clone dot log, we can force one again. It will automatically do this daily, but if you want to force one to make sure I got the syntax, right, we can do the same thing that we did with the transmission log. We can say, uh, log rotate dash V for verbose force. 
and then the definition file that we just created, log rotate.d and it's our clone. And now it will go through and it will do all of the things that it will normally do on a daily process or however often, like if it was weekly or monthly or whatever. And if we do ls minus lh, we're gonna see, look at that, it went from what was it 170 megabytes it compressed it down to 13 megabytes and now we have an r clone dot log file with zero uh bytes but let's see uh ls minus lh still nothing if i were to do something like touch mount um this is just uh where it's the r clone is mounted but now if we look we're gonna see that and it is using that file okay that's where um r clone is still able to write to it because we did that copy truncate thing so again, just a really quick tutorial on how to set up log rotate. And the reason you would want to do this is because if you're doing things like Docker or you're running like a, a program that you compile on your own, like our clone, I didn't install with a package manager. I just installed it on my own with a single binary. Uh, if you are creating big logs that aren't managed automatically by the system, they can fill up your hard drive with just stupid logs. And that's not what you want. So setting up log rotate for your own custom things is super easy. And now you know how to do it. So remember, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you at the next video.